Hey everybody, Craig Lieberman coming back at you. Today I have a special guest, my son, Tyler Lieberman. Although it's never been proven in court of law. I don't think there's any denying. I think any doubters after this video, um, I don't think they're gonna doubt they're not. anymore. Somebody gave us this idea, I think it was him, he's been talking about it for years, and he said, uh, basically, we should start roasting some people's cars, that would be a lot of fun. It wasn't really an idea that we should do it, it's just more of like a, I'm just gonna insert myself into all your videos and just roast people like while you're doing the videos anyways. <laughs> okay, so maybe it wasn't you, but I'm gonna blame it on you if this, if this just fails, but anyway, here I'll we go. I'll you his address if you guys want his address. <laughs> We got a lot of submissions from people. I really appreciate that. Um, he got a lot of submissions. I don't know how that I found your, your... Yeah, I think it was just because my name was on the thing. So they just were sending them to maybe you and to me. Uh, I as see, well okay. The These guys are smart. Like, yeah, I think I got like 40 or 50 submissions or I something I think you like got that. more than I did. Um, yeah. Maybe they thought you were going to be easier on them than I was. You're sorely mistaken <laughs> if you guys thought that was the case. <laughs> you don't know him very well. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> that story is coming up right after the break. Before we even get started, let me take a moment to say a big thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this episode. Our dependence on the internet has been rapidly increasing, that's no secret. The internet is how we stream our favorite shows and programming, it's how we keep in touch with our loved ones, and we even do most of our banking online these days. We'd like to think our information is safe, but with all the news about big companies having data leaks, we need to take every step possible to protect our personal data. Surfshark is a VPN service that protects your information by encrypting all the data that you send through the internet. This keeps prying eyes away and ensures that your sensitive data is always secure. If you're a global traveler like I am, you can access content that might be blocked in foreign countries. Not only is this good for people who want to keep up with their favorite shows, but it can also be a critical tool for those who live in countries that heavily censor or monitor its citizens. And right now, Surfshark has sweetened the deal with a special promo code from my YouTube viewers that offers 83% off. Just use the promo code FASTLIFE. I'll drop the link in the video descriptions down below, and the promo code will give you three free months of service. And as always, there's a 30-day no risk, money back guarantee. I want a couple of qualifiers here. First of all, I don't want anybody to take offense for it because you have to consider us like your buddies, like if we're all sitting in the garage having a beer and we're talking shit about other people's cars, just like you would be talking shit about our cars. It's all in good fun. Don't take it any of it personally, right? And you're getting some experience uh, from the two sides of the world. This guy from the drift world, mm. right? And the JDM, go totally JDM and me from the old crotchety white guy crowd. So <laughs> There will be a day where I transition to that side. It's like looking into my future. Oh God. But very much mixed thoughts, but that's okay. That's a different discussion. <laughs> By the way, if your car is not being featured in this particular one, it's mainly because a lot of these cars were A, either completely unmodified or only had one thing on them. And so we're not gonna talk about bone stock cars because it doesn't reflect on you. It reflects on how the manufacturer built that car. So that's not a fun discussion to have. So we're gonna skip over that. So don't take offense to that. And then the other side. And then the other side is, I mean, what was it? It was just like they were either completely stock with like nothing on them or they were just like, I mean, way too far over the top. I think if we were to actually make any material on it, I think it would, the video would get flagged for cyberbullying. <laughs> but the third thing is a lot of people sent us cars that were not ugly. A lot yeah, of- Yeah, there were some really good, yeah. good cars. And I was like, I can't really even roast this. And even some of the ones that I think we did choose, like it was kind of hard finding something so where do you want to start? So this first one that I've got here, so we'll do the Instagram name. So it's G Gustav, sorry if I butchered this. Gustav. Gustav, with a lot of Zs, uh, just EK. So this is what we're working with. It's this blue Civic APC taillights. Those are entirely your doing. So you have no one to blame but yourself uh, for those. Paid placement. I don't care how much they paid you, it's, it's APC. They paid Universal, not me. Well, then you have no excuse. <laughs> <laughs> Technical advisor, look up the word advisor. I gave you a lot of advice you never took. I mean, if you were giving advice and they didn't take it, then- They should have fired me. They should have. I think they were paying you too much to be completely honest. You got to swim in that pool though, but go ahead. <laughs> Once a year. <laughs> I don't know, these Ninja Star kind of looking wheels. I don't know who makes those. If I zoom in, I'm gonna assume one of these stickers on the window has like anime titties on them. Cause I feel like that's just like the thing that kids do these days for whatever. Kids, kids. <laughs> kids these days. Kids. Uh, and then we go to like the picture of the fitment. I'm gonna use the word fitment in quotation marks here. So you can see on this lovely uh, baconized fender here, the sticker that says one finger gap. I don't know whose finger they're talking about, but I mean, I- Shrek's finger, a giant figure. That, that's a lot of gap. That thing is hat. That thing looks like a rusty razor blade. 
I wouldn't want to go anywhere near that. What does that say? Ling Long? Lion? I don't know. Some kind of tires that have the contact patch of a dime. I especially love the fact that this car has, a, a, you see this curb feeler here on the tire? Yeah. That's for people who can't drive. I remember we're doing this with Goodyear many years ago, mm. but that's not enough. He has to put another curb feeler in place in the form of this wheel, <laughs> which has been curbed a couple of times. Yeah, the center cap says Whistler on it. I didn't even know that that was a wheel. I thought Whistler was just like Whistler tips that you throw on your exhaust or something I like thought that. Whistler was a ski resort in Wyoming. I mean, maybe it is too. Yeah, I, I think don't know. it is. All I'm going to say is that for whoever is driving this car, number one, you're brave, so props. This car, I'm going to assume, has one third of one inch of suspension travel. So I'm gonna say that you are one pothole away from getting yeeted into a guardrail at 70 miles an hour. Funny enough, this car actually reminds me of a good buddy of mine's old Civic back in Oklahoma. That was like almost the same thing, except it was more rusted and had like mismatched color yeah. panels. That's just the Honda thing to do. But this is not gonna age well. This is gonna get all rusted inside yeah, it's and it's gonna be bad. Yeah. And truth be told, cause I mean, it's hard to tell with the photos that we have, but like the paint doesn't look bad. I would say really like if there was a little bit of body work done to the fenders and then maybe some different wheels like some old like uh, Equip O2s or something like yeah. that from work or something and maybe like a little bit of a meteor tire and the APCs they gotta go. If it was just that like a couple small changes I think it would actually look really cool. Yeah. I think Civics are pretty easy to make look pretty yeah. good. And the, like and the factory tail lights are, are fine. They look yeah, good. They're, they're fine. fine. As a matter of fact they look better than the APC stuff that we were using back then. Back then no so. tail lights looks better than the APC stuff. Yeah pretty stuff. much. <laughs> the Castrol Supra right? This thing, <laughs> he's already laughing. <laughs> Come on, man, this is Gran, Gran Turismo. I, when you and I used to play Gran Turismo together, I, I wrecked you until you wrecked me, and that's when I quit because you have taken the mantle away from me. It's no more fun anymore. Watching a 10 year old throw the remote controller across the room was hilarious to me. <laughs> uh, he's very confident because I can see the photos, and then he just says, Have fun. He's like, I bet you guys won't be able to come up with something. Well, you're partially right. Um, <laughs> so the problem is it's hard for me to find something to hate because it's a uh, Castrol livery on a Mark IV Supra. Mark IV Supras are overrated. Sorry, that's a different discussion. I'm not going to get into that, but I mean, I'll argue with that with anybody if they want to in my, in my DMs. But the Castrol livery, awesome. They're real TE37s. From what I can tell, they're not tehe 37s So that's awesome. I feel like the only real downside is I feel like I know there was so much hard work, just blood, sweat, and tears of other people's money. I'm just kidding. Your money put into this car just so it could sit at the parking lot at Cars and Coffee. Hard parking. If I'm wrong, please send me something of this car getting ripped on at like a circuit or something because that would look amazing. That would absolutely look amazing. I would I would absolutely drive that 100%. I, it's hard to even roast that car. Uh, so the next one that I had was this Mr. Boost Lee. It was this black MR2 with Takata green TE37s, green neon, and like this Origin GT-ish uh, style wing on the back of it. Again, as someone who like likes T37s, I mean, if the, if they are, the the picture's kind of pixelated. I can't tell at first glance if they are real. They might not be. The green looks a little off, but it might might be, might be a little. Light. I mean, it's Takata green, so yeah. like the color, like I don't know. It's hard to tell because I can't I can't see it head on. I will give benefit of the doubt, but God help you if you have Volk Racing stickers on not T37s. God, the cyber bullying would have been real. I heard Congress is adopting a bill about that. Congress can't save you. <laughs> on the hell that would come down if there are Volk stickers on not. <laughs> um, this looks like an alternate version of the hijack cars for the Fast and Furious one, if I'm being completely honest. <laughs> yeah, that's this was the high budget one. We didn't have a very high budget, so we bought yeah. Civics because um, we were paying four grand for them. I do have a request though, if you could please film yourself driving this car with the GT wing on uh, underneath a semi truck, that would be great. I would really like to see that. Me too, me too, um, me too. I'll make a whole video about that. That would be great. <laughs> Can't see the rest of the car, so we have I no can't more. see the, well, I mean, I can see the front and I can see the back and I don't know what's going on with the taillights here. It's, I don't know, it's kind of like a mix between 180SX, now, MR2. I'm gonna jump in here, here. I actually like this car without the neon, okay? Mm -hmm. And more modest wing. I don't think you need a big wing with that. No, I, I agree. I think in the and, wheel fitment too, um, yeah. I would say, I mean, obviously a more aggressive offset would be cooler, but like a modest maybe wheel spacer or something to space it out to where it's more towards the actual like body lines. Yeah, at uh, least five mil, maybe 10. Yeah, it's probably a good 10 mil for the back. Yeah. Uh, and a more modest rear wing or something. But he's in England um, and if it's 
if this car looks like it's in a city, maybe for London, then that's a whole different thing, you know, because driving the most good cars in there in, in London is very tight there. <laughs> He's got like well, splitters and stuff around the car. This, uh, my, my comment stands because if you've ever driven in anywhere in England, the roads were built for stagecoaches from you know, 900 years ago. Oh. Nobody has a garage. That's People why, are parking them on the street. They're asked 200 years ago. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> 246, but who's scouting? Next, I got some good old American muscle car right here. Whoops. This guy is, I'm going to call this a Trans Am because it's trying to trans from an American car to a Japanese drift car. <laughs> this, this is actually interesting because as someone who came from like the world of like 240s and like Tengoku Dory 10 stuff, I can see like some styling cues taken from like some of the drift cars. Like it very much looks kind of like your BN-ish style body kit with like your vented front fenders and like the rear fender flares and stuff. Those look like Kiwamis or CR Kais, but I'm, I'm going to assume they're not real work wheels, so I'm just gonna call them CR Lies. And I can't tell what's up there. I don't know if that's a hood or something like that. You get the award for the most JDM Pontiac I've ever seen in my life. I don't know what that means. I don't know if that's if a that's compliment. Worth, if that's, yeah, I don't know if that's worth anything or if that's a compliment or what, but that's it. Just the most JDM Pontiac I've ever seen. And what, that's a Trans Am you said, right? Yeah. Okay. And the, <laughs> the exhaust that. tips, right out of aisle two and pet boys what is going on with that this, the factory exhaust would have been fine take the gt wing off of mr boost lee's uh mr2 and put it on this i don't think so i don't think so <laughs> <laughs> so the next one that i had was uh this guy veal stig um it's this red NA Mazda Miata with this body kit and these wheels. Looking at it, the very first thing that comes to mind is the Wish.com version of Dominic's RX-7. <laughs> what? It's almost veil side, but not really veil side. Is it's there any other pictures? Kind of, just from a higher view. Those are like simulated veil side wheels. That's what I'm saying. It's I forget what those wheels what those wheels were called. The ones that had like cyclone. Some, yeah, but but the the actual wheels were Andrew Racing Mesh. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what they're. Well, these are not Andrew by Andrew. They're not for racing, um, and they're not mesh. And it's definitely not veil side. But I can see like all the styling cues of it. Um, Maybe you're that's just, you're just missing the rocket down the side. Um, <laughs> But at the same time, uh, I know a lot of people give Miatas flack. Having driven a lot of different Miatas, it's it's hard to hate on them when you're talking like driving dynamics. Miatas are actually really fun, fun to drive. No matter how fast you think you are at a track day, there's always some 50 year old white dude with knee high white socks and jean shorts that's faster than you in a Miata. Right. That's one thing that I've learned. <laughs> so your ego will definitely get checked. That, for sure. Um, I think this car, I mean, the body kit I think is polarizing. I think you either love it or hate it, but I think if nothing else, lowering the ride height a little bit and then putting on like some 15 inch like Watsonabes or something like that, um, kind of more of like a traditional like JDM kind of wheel, yeah. it's much more cohesive. So when trying to thing. make trying to make it what, something it's not, just embrace what it actually is, right? Because mm -hmm. it's a great car. And with those old school wheels, it's just period correct and it's just a, free, a great thing. Yeah. And if people know actually know that they may out on the history, they're gonna have more respect for you. But if you're 16 years old and you wanna be in a uh, FD RX-7 that looks like a Fast and Furious car and you don't have the budget to do it, that's the way to do it, but you're gonna get some flack. It's a way to do it. Mm-hmm. So this, we got uh, Andreas Anderson with two SS uh, 99, and he gives us a 180SX that looks good from afar, but far from good. <laughs> the key with drift cars is so long as they look good from like 20 feet away, you're pretty much golden. Same thing with so, movie cars. <laughs> basically, so I'm so split on this one because like I come from these kinds of cars and I see it and it's got everything that I would expect from like kind of like the drift styled car, so to speak, for lack of a better term. I can't tell if they're SSR Vienna Courages or like Wed Cerebus wheels, but origin aggressive type aero, like flared probably origin type three wheels, 180SX taillights, 326 power-ish wing, I don't know, if it's a real one or whatever. You got the stickers going all down the side of it and stuff like that. I love it, but at the same time, because I came from it, I kind of hate it because as someone who like had one and then drove it every day and like thought it was the coolest thing. And then once I started having to drive in the real world, like I realized how much it sucked. It's kind of like marriage. <laughs> <laughs> how is your mom? <laughs> She's great. Great. She's doing really good. Okay. Um, I used to, cause you know, I had like the deep dish, like VSKFs and stuff like that. And I used to be all about it. I, I've grown so much to hate um, 
not really hate. I just, I don't really care for like the deep dish wheels on drift cars anymore and stuff like that. I just don't. I know it's like cool and like there are some cars that draw a lot of like inspiration like car Gucci's RX-7 and I'm very much just more into like the one piece like monoblock. Like so what's, what's changed? Maturity. I guess, I don't know. Well, the other thing, drifting has gotten so expensive now. And the other, th and the thing that I really hate about this is that realistically, in today's day and age, this is probably like a $30,000 car, which is nuts to me. Because when I first started getting into drifting, which was the very, very, very early 2000s, you could give S13 shells away come get it, like just bring a trailer and it's yours, or like 500 bucks maybe. Now people have the audacity to charge like $4,000 for like this busted S13 shell with like a destroyed single jingle KA in the thing, <laughs> and just like rusted <laughs> fenders, four lug, like just the whole thing, and it's just trash, and they'll want like thousands of dollars. I don't get it anymore. The drift tax. The drift tax is- You're part of what caused it. It's extortion, it's not even tax anymore. It's extortion. extortion, okay. It's unbelievable. Props to you for having it. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you drive it like the way that it looks like it gets driven because there are absolute blasts to drive, but. Yeah, they are. All right, this goes out to Street Punks, Ian Swing, AKA. Somebody saw Fast and Furious 2 20 times. <laughs> this looks like somebody spent a ton of money. That looks like a true carbon fiber hood with a red in it, right? Yeah, like red in the I mean, the he's clearly trying to make this a too fast, too furious skyline. I can see the NOS fogger going to the T4 turbo, Dominic. Dominic Toretto style. Yeah. Okay. I can see the TV angled toward the driver. On That's the, illegal. Whatever. It, it's the same thing with my skyline. I think he ran out of money when he got to the steering wheel and he had to find something at... Uh, Is this a box of like takeout for noodles hanging from the... That's f racist. That's a box of takeout That's noodles Chinese takeout. like an air freshener, <laughs> like hanging from the rear view mirror. <laughs> oh my God. No, 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 no. What? He must have missed this part. You don't put diamond plating floors on your car because they, they fall, fall out, out, out. They fall out. You don't do that. It's bad. <laughs> didn't That's you pay attention? Juju, that was you didn't watch the Fast and Furious documentary. He didn't watch it all the way through. Oh, and he just no. couldn't, couldn't. It's got like multiple like pink colors and stuff. It's like red and silver and black. Um, I think two tone would have been fine. There's so many colors going on here. It's hard to kind of distinguish like everything that's going on. Here's Here's what I like stereos. about it. In 2000, 2001, you would have won every car show east of Los Angeles, all the way to Florida, all the way to Massachusetts. I know I went to 11 shows every year. I saw the quality of cars. This would be top in Honda Civic in every venue that we went to for those fellas. But then 2002 came. The, the real ironic thing, honestly, about that entire car is the fact that like 10 years ago, you would have gotten a hard on for that car. Yeah. That's like the exact kind of car that you would build. Yeah, if I was and building a Honda. Yeah. Maybe. Well, no, 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 no. Because like you did the exact same thing yeah, to yeah. like a Supra and yeah, Skyline. And M3, blah, blah, blah. M3. Absolutely. It's like the exact same thing. Absolutely. And that was a different time with different styling. 16 years ago. That wasn't that long ago. Yeah. It's, it's, you, were, you were barely getting your driver's license. You know what? Again, I think we just go back to the APC taillights. I, you don't have anyone to blame but yourself, <laughs> I think, on that one. I hate this kid. This is why I never had another one, but if anybody wants to ask. <laughs> So this next one comes from um, Jag underscore himself. You knew what you were doing because you, I think anybody knew that if they had anything that was equipped with any kind of VQ engine, you were gonna make the list. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so it's this 350Z, it's like this dark purple air inlet on the front bumper, carbon hood, some kind of wheels. I can't tell what they are because they're black and it's got like side splitters or whatever and like this duck bill wing. Four exhaust tips sticking out the back because that's exactly what you want when you have a VQ engine is more exhaust tips. Well, at least he has t exhaust on the car. I get it now. I look at the license plate. It's New Jersey. New Jersey? It's New Jersey. What exit? It what explains exit? everything. <laughs> Good God. Why did this become a thing? These, uh, the window louvers. I don't understand why uh, Let me Let me explain thing. louvers for you for you young'uns, okay? Back in the days, in 1970s and 1980s, putting tint on the car was very expensive. But louvers, you can get them anywhere, and they were made out of metal, actually aluminum, and they were like $40, and you can get them at any auto parts stores. You can get them a here. And so people put that out to keep the sun out of the back of the car, right? And what it told people is that you were broke. When you put louvers on your car, you were either old and white or you were broke or both. <laughs> it was just, did you just point at me? Yeah. <laughs> You're out of the f 
Well, I see them on so many cars where they'll put like windows or they'll put louvers on the rear windows, louvers on like the quarter windows and stuff. I think it's a fad that needs to die. I just, it, it, I, it died. I don't think and it looks good on anything except, and I'm not a, a muscle car guy, but I think it looks in place on some of those and maybe some of the old retros like it died. 70s it, Japanese it, cars or something it, like that. It, I, I don't see the reason for it. It was done in the 90s. Yeah, it was it's done in the 90s. Why people are bringing it back It's yeah. one thing you don't want to bring back. So um, not my jam. I have to hate because it's a Z and I'm legally obligated to hate because anybody who knows me knows how much I despise the sound of a VQ engine. Um, on the outside, on the inside, it sounds good. Yeah, well, you know that thing when people say like it doesn't matter how you are on the outside; it depends on like what's on the inside. Yeah. Yeah. Well, VQs are equally as ugly <laughs> on the inside. <laughs> Disgusting. <Okay. engines. laughs> There's only one that I've ever heard that sounds good, and that was I think like the Amuse demo car, like the the Amuse like super Legera that had like titanium headers or something. That one sounds really good, but unless you're spending four grand on headers, you're That's just kind of you're just kind of stuck with the engine. In all honesty, this car is actually really clean. It's nice, yeah. Yeah, it's actually really clean. I like that it doesn't have like the crazy super bolted on uh, over Flanders that plague SEMA every year these days. Yeah. Wheels aren't my f I don't even know what they are. They're not my first choice, but can't uh, see the brakes. But it looks like you got something going on with the brake caliper, which is I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if that's the caliper. Again, like a hub or something black like wheels for me say that you've run out of ideas and if you don't have giant big brakes to show off the wheel shouldn't be black yeah. this is just me saying this it it also has like a proper size tire it's not like a 12j wheel with like a 215 35 stretch on the, right, the right. freaking thing it's the right fitment uh, yeah so it's actually really cool if it were me i would ditch the louvers and i would maybe do different wheels that are more of like a contrasting color whether that be bronze or like white i know you kind of have your own thing with white wheels but like bronze or white or even like silver or something like that I think would do and I think would do better justice one muffler would be fine yeah. and it looks like it's got like this kind of cage or roll bar in the yeah. back it looks like a gold I'm gonna assume maybe kind of reminiscent of like RB26 valve cover gold yeah maybe um, maybe tie that into the wheels or the brake calipers yeah, yeah. Uh, like yeah. gold calipers and like bronze wheels or something I think yeah. that car would actually good stuff good, good stuff now, who's our next victim Gaijin R32 let's get this guy I love it already just because the name I have high hopes Ooh. <laughs> First off, if you're showing me in any Sky Skyline GT, use a factory color. If you're gonna do a purple, Nissan's purple is the best. Midnight purple two, midnight purple three. They got that going on. So the pump, this feels like it's trying, trying to get into a rap video. We've got some kind of body kit, like BN sports-ish kind of era. I don't know what wheels those are, but they look like convex slipped wheels or something. What's with the fitment here? I don't know. The oh, They went on all that effort. This is more stance kind of It would be if it was like two inches lower. And I think that's- Four inches lower. Look at, yeah, look at the- That's, it's very high up off the ground. There's a body kit, some wheels, some stretched tires, a carbon hood. It looks like some engine stuff done. It's not a bad way to spend $10,000. But overall, like I think it just needs like a good, it just needs a good drop. Uh, so do you. <laughs> um, but the motor's on point. The fab work is actually kind of interesting because you can see, oh God, Mishimoto. I hate looking at Mishimoto products. It's just the bane of my existence. <laughs> but you can see like the gussets and like the dimple die work that looks like it was done right there at like the rad support, mm. uh, a bunch of like pie cuts for the turbo mm. and like exhaust and stuff. It definitely 110% needs like an actual drop. And that doesn't mean like slamming it to where there's like credit card like clearance from the ground, but a couple inches of a drop, and I don't even know what kind of wheels they are, but that's okay. I'm confident in saying that they need to go. I really bet it point. runs like a raped ape though. Probably, I don't know. I mean, the, the piping in that photo doesn't look like it's finished, so I don't right. know if it runs at all. Well, it was running at one point. Here it was here, here here moving. At one point, yeah. So, there you go. so Gaijin Performance USA, congratulations. You made the list. <laughs> uh, so this next one comes from someone named Ant Banks underscore bra. Uh, bra? Very fitting. Bra was the first thing I said to myself when I saw Saw it. <laughs> so it's this gray Toyota Matrix. I can't tell because I'm not too familiar with these cars, but if that's like the 2ZZ engine, those are actually pretty cool. I know some people that swap those into like MR Spiders and stuff. Those are pretty cool. Um, but immediately I just see a black set of Tee Hee 37s. <laughs> the inner bully has to come out because that's what I see. So I have to see that. Uh, but at least he's got slotted rotors. So he will stop no faster than he would have stopped before with stock rotors. So that's always cool. Slotted rotors don't but do anything look... for braking performance. I don't care what anybody tells you, they don't do anything. If 
they did, they would put them on all cars factory. Well, they do it for drilled rotors, but there's a difference in like manufacturing process. That's whatever, mm -hmm. it's a different story. This is the thing that I felt like I needed to address because I don't understand what exactly is happening here with this shifter mechanism. It's like one of those like CAE, like all metal shifter mechanisms people put into like the BMWs and stuff that are super slick, but it's like you didn't have that available. So you just picked up parts that were left outside of the hardware store. And I'm just, I'm just very perplexed as to what's happening. I'm telling you here. what's happening right here. This, the rest of the bezel is missing. Well, yeah. And it's exposed. Well, I understand that, but it's that's probably the stock med transmission but stuff. But these are like rusted bolts that I would take from like my RC car or something. I don't know. The, the whole mechanism just looks very odd to me and just kind of out of place, especially since the rest of the interior is maybe it's there. The, the, the short shifter kit for that thing. The super and the in the get drag. Yeah. If you buy a short shifter kit, you could turn it into is sequential. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say this is not sequential. It's of course not. <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's probably uh, automatic, but it's not. No, I mean, it says it's six speed from the looks of it. I just, I don't, I think this is probably the biggest gripe. Well, not even a gripe because I don't really care because I sleep soundly at night and it's not my money. For a car that otherwise is like completely stock and has all of its interior, I don't see what the benefit is of having half of your center console kind of ripped out for, I don't know what this is supposed to achieve. Yeah, if it's not a fuck sequential. Or like one of those like CAEs or yeah. something that moves the, the shifter like up really tall up towards like the steering wheel or something. I'm gonna again go out on the limb and say this isn't seeing like any rally stages or anything like that. I don't know what's going on with like that shark looking like duck bill thing on the back of uh, the hatch there. It feels very peel and stick to me. And of course- The window visors gotta have window visors. That gives yeah, you at yeah. least plus 10 scene points. I think at it's, least five followers it's for, for Japanese people who smoke while driving in the rain. That's what that's for. Uh, so maybe it's an 80 year old Japanese driver. The Ant Banks underscore bra IG tag makes me think that he's not 80 years old. Or Japanese. Probably not. All right, well maybe he maybe <laughs> likes to smoke with the windows down in the I, rain. Again, this is one of those cars that's not, that isn't even bad. It's just kind of like a, what's the, I think, what's the end goal? Like, what's the mindset here? Right, right, right. The fitment in the stance don't look like it's crazy. It doesn't look like it slams to like an unusable height. I think putting the interior back together would be a good and idea. And maybe some better wheels and tires and like it would be fine. Lightweight, you don't have the luxury to be hauling heavy wheels yeah, around. Just, if you want better braking, get pads and fluid because your the slotted rotors do nothing. They just don't do anything. Okay, up next, E-V-L-F-E-W C-R-X, Evil Few Zero-X. So what you have here is this late 80s CRX. Now there was a special edition called the CRX SI and those cars were fantastic. They were light, they were cool, and they were good looking from the factory. There was really no reason to touch them. Kamei and some other companies made body kits for it, but body kit manufacturing back then was very primitive really compared to today. So what they would do is if they have giant holes somewhere, they would just fill it up with chicken wire. And this is like seriously chicken wire, not the good stuff Stuff that the automotive stuff, it looks like actual chicken wire. And I noticed that you have one of those anodized tow hooks. That'll so, rip in half instantly. Right. <laughs> So you might want to rethink that. Uh, you might want to think that rear bumper. I'm not quite sure why, where there's rivets. Rivets on what looks to be like a stock body. Mm -hmm. Like there's no fender flares or anything. It's just kind of like exposed rivets for no reason. I will say though, I am actually very grateful about one thing on the car. And it's the fact that he put that it is a dual overhead cam on the back of it. So you I, won't want to mess with him yeah, on the way? I would, yeah. I, that way I know I can save myself the embarrassment. If I ever wanted a street race, I'd be like, whoa, hold on. He's got dual cams. I don't want to get taken to Gabblebee's. <laughs> so I'm going to like back off and I'm just gonna get out, I'm gonna get my on my exit. And not make eye contact. And not make eye contact, no, because that, see that's definitely an SI, that definitely says SI, SI on and it. it's definitely not. Um, again though, it's like the APC-esque taillights. I don't, you, I don't think that you realize the level of impact that you've had on this planet. Again, yeah, rivets around the fenders. Do you really need canards on the front? You have a problem with it's them? It's actually, you know what? He put canards on the front of a front wheel drive car. So there's, in theory, uh, downforce on the front. Seven more pounds, right? Especially Houses. like the uh, the uh, pointy lug nuts that stick out a mile. I feel like that whole body kit is molded to that car. So back in my day, if you were putting over fenders on these cars, which most people only did it for actual race cars, and they put rivets on because it's easier to fix it. Mm -hmm. So if you were putting rivets on your car, on the race cars, it made sense because the good thing is gonna come off a thousand times. And so you can just rivet them back on. 
But if you were doing it on a streetcar, that, mean, that meant you were broke. You, you wouldn't pay to blend it into the car. I think that's kind of the weirdest part of this one is it's like, it looks like the body kit in some places is molded, yet it's got rivets that are just, I don't know if those are rivets or what, but it does, that part doesn't, and that's, is, I don't know, it's like a self-tapping screw that's kind of pulling two pieces of the body together. It's very, it's very weird in how the body work is done in the car. Wheel fitment in the car needs to be lowered about two and a half inches. The, the, the wheel fitment in the back is horrible. I mean, it's, there's so much fender gap up there. I don't know if we can get the car low enough without dragging the kit. The rear bumper is like its entire thing. I, f I think we could make a video just on the rear bumper by itself, but I'm not going to go there. The weird thing to me is just the fact that it's like, it's like a half molded body kit, but not really molded, but it's got exposed rivets and stuff like that. I would say if it were me, I would go back to like a stock rear bumper, get rid of that tow hook because that tow hook's not going to do anything. It's probably just going to rip in half anyways. I don't know what the deal is with the rivets or whatever, but I would just leave it like stock body and then just lower it a little bit. You know what? And then pull the stickers off of it. I'll go one further. I think you should restore it to an actual CRX SI. Those things are commanding high dollars right now. And yeah. people have a great appreciation for those things. Right down to the body, the, the stock body work. They're really just stock headlights, stock mm. tail lights. Clean up the interior. I, I don't know what's inside the interior, but yeah. make it look like, and that car would be very respected at any car show. Yeah. Anybody. I, I think those are actually kind of the best ways to do Hondas now is just to do kind of like the resto mod, I guess, kind of thing. Like I always said that if I were to build a Honda, if I were gonna do like a Honda build, for sure be EK, Civic Hatchback, Paint a championship white, uh, red Recaro interior, like your B18 engine, lowered on like some 15 inch T37s or something like that. Keep it naturally aspirated, just good bolt-ons and suspension work and just have it as like a fun car to drive around every now and then. I was never a Honda I guy. I had one front wheel drive and once I was old enough and had enough money to buy rear wheel drive or all wheel drives, I never went back. Yeah, they're fun cars, the older ones, if they're set up right, I think that's the problem is so many people do such weird things with them that it's hard to find one that drives really well but like i've been lucky to be in some that drive very well and are set up really well to where they don't weigh anything you know 2400 pounds right. or whatever they are right maybe 200 horsepower whatever they are they rev to the moon which is hilarious they're mm -hmm. obviously not very quick but mm -hmm. it's hilarious to drive and just the way if you set up the suspension properly the way that you can get like good lift off oversteer like coming into a corner is a lot of fun and i would be all for it but i think too many people try to do too many things with them agreed and there's great cars when they're in good shape and they have a good engine in them. You don't have to restore the engine to the to the base engine, like you said. Put the good engines in there. Next, I have. Well, no, it's your turn. What do you have left? So I've got this. Uh, this came in from some guy. It's Ape underscore Inc. I was a little perplexed as to what this was originally, but it's like a Honda Accord wagon with what appears to be an RB25. And if you look closely, it's got full cage with like gussets going through it, uh, brit interior, harnesses. It's got like I'm an out. eight inch lip on the back of the thing. Well, hold up, hold up. It's not front wheel drive anymore. No. You're just running an RB. Yeah, so I, but so I don't know if then it's all wheel or if it's rear wheel drive. Can't. I would assume maybe it would be, it would have to Can be rear wheel drive second? at that point, unless yeah. you're talking like the entire drive train and, and everything else. But I just have to assume that it's rear wheel drive. It's a very interesting uh, build. It's got a lot of money. Yeah, with a lot going on in it. Is that a Mishimoto radiator or uh, intercooler at the front? It sure is, yeah, it is. Uh, strike number one. And then let's keep going. What else do we have? The um, color, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's paint or if it's just completely... It looks kind of matte. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. It's an interesting Mint. color choice. Brown and red? Brown and red, yeah. It's like my, my colonoscopy. I was just about to say, it's like a colonoscopy <laughs> at this point. Maybe think, reconsider the col colors. I think silver and red. Reconsider the colors, maybe, yeah. Brown and red, just honestly, if the car was just painted black, cause like black and red, that would be wicked. It'd be solid. Yeah, yeah, it'd be good. Something about the rear fenders or lack thereof. Maybe they're gonna put over fenders. Yeah, I'm assuming they will. Um, that's the picture I had to work with. I, I got another one, but it was very pixelated. It was very hard to see what I was looking at. It's, I mean, it's not something I would ever do. But at the same time, there's obviously a lot of work that's gone into that. Uh, I think it really just needs a change in the in the color combo. Do something about that rear wheel in the fitment. Yeah, be better. About that. Not my favorite. The year of Honda Accord. My favorite was the '96. Uh, they all look the same to me. No, 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 no. You're racist. All Japanese cars look the same to you. Okay. <laughs> For this one, we go to Pink Nightmare with his Neon SRT4. All black, nice carbon fiber hood. 
because you need all that ventilation, I guess. And I mean, you know, everybody knows how I how much I love SRT fours. SRT fours are the cars that you bought when your parents would not co-sign on an Evo or an STI. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you bought instead. SRT fours were the cars that you bought when you lived in a place where it, your parents would only l allow you to buy American to sport compact cars. You're not buying any of that Japanese. That so was the, you at one point. Yeah, I t never me. It was my father, that not was me. You at one point. Never me. Never me. Um, People would buy the Cobalt. They would buy the Cavalier, which was. God awful. Pontiac Sunfire, um, all those hideous cars. A Saturn, anything. Guy, like my brother, bud. God bless him. I'm definitely adopted. Mm. And it's got the gigantic intercooler on the front, which tells me it's five minutes away from inevitably blowing up, probably. <laughs> And it's already leaking more oil. Yeah, yeah, some pink, uh, like MB Battles or something like that, I guess. I've never been an SRT4 guy. That's just me. I think Evos and STIs were far beyond uh, what those cars were capable of. Unless all you cared about was just drag racing the quarter mile or something. Yeah, because they were lightweight. They didn't even, you know, they had power windows up front and rolled down in the back, you know, because nobody else wanted to be seen in that car. So. <laughs> so. The pink wheels, I think, are kind of the biggest hang up. Um, and he painted the calipers the same lights, this black light stuff. I mean, it's not really over the top though. Like it's modest enough to where it really isn't anything crazy. I honestly think that it just needs different wheels that are a different color and then to be posted online for sale so you can trade it for an STI or anything. <laughs> Yeah. Next up, we have LXRD Drip, D-R-I-P-P, -P, had submitted a lovely, oh God, here we go. <laughs> Hang on people, we're gonna go for a hell of a ride because I know how you feel about VQ VQs. I've been training my entire life for this moment, <laughs> for this car. Um, it is a 370Z, I swear it's every stereotype imaginable. It's a 370Z, gigantic bash bar on the front, no front bumper, uh, chassis mounted GT wing on the back, and the pictures of him driving down the highway with the steering wheel hanging out. You prefer a vape? <laughs> then a douche flute? No, I'd no? prefer that car to just not exist. <laughs> That Wait a it's, minute. it's everything that I expect. The only thing that I think that it's missing is like a Z society or Zo society, whatever sticker on the windshield. Um, just to let everybody know that you run with that posse. I think that's supposed to be a flex. I don't know if it is. I think they want to identify uh, that they're part of the intersection takeover crowd and they want, proud of, want to be proud of it. This, this to me, it looks like this car, like what was in an accident and he had to put two cars together to rebuild his car because of his insurance. So it's missing the front half of the car and it's unpainted and it's got the giant chassis mounted wing on the back of it that absolutely does not do anything for downforce. And then I have to, I don't, we don't have any pictures of the back. I'm just going to assume that she went all out on this and there's like three foot long straight pipe exhaust sticking out the back of it, which just means that it sounds horrendous so the looks are just because god awful. <laughs> the sound just has to be ridiculous. I mean, it would be the perfect car for Helen Keller <laughs> because it's someone who doesn't have to look at it and they don't, don't have, have to, to hear. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. The giant bash bar, the oil cooler lines exposed right there. That's now, perfect. O expo exposed oil cooler lines is always the way to go. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Especially for minor bumper incursions. We need to talk about this steering wheel hanging out of the car. I don't know why this is considered a flex. Not once when I was 16, which is crazy to think that was already like over 15 years ago. But not once when I was sitting there driving in my lowered on HKS coilovers S14, hitting potholes and stuff, what did I sit there and think, you know what would be really cool is if I just ripped the steering wheel out of my car right now doing 70 miles an hour. If you want to have a surefire way of yeeting your car into the guardrail at 80 miles an hour, I feel like that's the best way to do it. Well, maybe he's stripped and he's actually driving with vice grips. I've seen some of that. Uh, if that's an NRG steering wheel, it might actually be more secure. <laughs> <laughs> We've had using the ice <laughs> Don't use energy stimulus or but grip oil. Honestly, though, I'm going to step out here for a second. If he put the bumper back on it and painted it the same color, it wouldn't look half bad. No. Make the car one color with the front bumper and then please stop. Please, people, stop giving Battle Arrow your money for these wings because they're just, <laughs> I don't get it. But if it didn't have the wing and if it had like a painted front end with a bumper, um, it would actually look pretty cool. Also, I can't see the exhaust, but if it's a straight pipe, um, please don't. And <laughs> add like some resonators and mufflers back. Well, I think that wraps it up, doesn't it? Unless we're gonna not pull any punches and we're gonna roast each other's cars. <laughs> You've got a stock FRS Hoconi. This mother 
Let me tell you what this kid did. He Are had we a, talking about this car or? Yeah, how, how far? No fair. I've had more racer cars than yours, but okay. Go ahead. Well, I don't know which cars are, which cars are we going to talk about. Go ahead. Talk about whatever we want. You can go first. You can go first. Because I have a lot more material to work with. This garage is filled with material for me to work with. <laughs> so let's go to the green car. This green car. No, no, no. The green car. The green car, your old Datsun, that, your Nissan that you gave back to me. Fuck, I don't want to be in this video anymore. <laughs> 